Welcome back, everyone, to another Zero K Exhibition match. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are back with another game on Desert Rumble! I say that because I like this map. It's a cool map. It's a cool-looking map. It's a cool-playing map. So, yeah, we have Randy over in the bottom right playing Cloak, and Dregs over in the northwest playing Jump Bots. So, Dregs, a bit of a matchup advantage right now. Jump Bots are... they're nice like that. They are very strong. But yeah, with let's see, opening up here with Pyro against, well, it will be Glaive. Largely scouting out, trying to see what the heck is going on. And that is going to see they are running against Jump Bots. Well, they were running and now they're spreading all across the landscape in pieces. But yeah, Jump Bots. So anyway, with that, what is, what is Drake's going to do? I mean, Cloakie struggles against Jump Bot, as a rule. And we're seeing Dregs actually not even bothering to go for any units right now. I mean, part of that is that they are building up their metal. So they want to make sure that they're not using too much of it on units so they can get their economy up faster. Sorry, other way around. Randy! Same thing. Randy's kind of waiting until they get their metal up, so they don't have to worry about it. It's, it's just a way of trying to optimize production. But no, Randy is not, in fact, building much in the way of their... Yeah, it's getting constructors up, but besides the conjurer, is not much. I, I want to say Randy's trying to stabilize in terms of metal, it's just that they haven't really been doing much to that effect. Anyway, with that. Okay, people, Dan, we were pointing out in chat that. Jumpbot has a hard time with Cloakie because of Phantom. Like, yes, that's all well and good, but Phantom costs 750 metal. It's the early game where that becomes a problem. And even the mid game, because moderators are a real pain in the butt to deal with. But yeah, the early game, Cloak tends to struggle with, against Jumpbot. I mean, it'll be curious to see what Randy does, because of course, if you have plenty of experience with this matchup, it's not going to be a big deal. But still, it is kind of tricky. The puppies can get rid of Glaze pretty easily. Pyros are also quite strong against, well, any Raiders. They are they are officially Riot units. Or Raider Riot units, but they still are good against large clumps of units, seeing as they are using a flamethrower with big spread like line splash. Regardless, more importantly, Dregs is getting a massive economic advantage. Like Randy has built up a couple extra metal extractors. They've reclaimed a few rocks, but they haven't actually managed to get much beyond that. Instead, looking like they're going to go for a few raids. Probably figuring that Dregs, having put most of their army forward, probably isn't defending at home too much. Maybe a Lotus here or there, but otherwise, nothing to really worry about. Also, no, I don't think they were double-checking the 3.5. They wouldn't be able to see it from down there. Same time, though, Pyro coming back here, taking out a bunch of Randy's wind generators, but it's not the biggest deal. Randy has plenty of power to work with. They have enough solar gener or solar plants that it's not going to stop them any. Now they are starting to catch up on economy as well, as they are going around the back lines. Smart move, too, as there are no defenses. This Lotus... 15 seconds left, but it's going to take only about 5 seconds for the Glaze to get in. And that Lotus will not be long for this world, neither will the Conjurer and... Or sorry, the Conjurer, the Constable. Or to be fair, maybe it will. Randy looking to go up and actually fight off that Constable. Of course, it can just jump back down. So, that is a bit of a tricky thing. But at the very least, the economy has been slowed down. Much like... Randy's forces here because, yeah, the slow beam off of that constable is a bit of a pain in the butt. Same time, though, Pyro over the no southeast from Dregs, not able to do a whole lot, but still able to scout out what has been done. And it looks like that constable will come out okay. And the Glaive is trying, but that jump is able to dodge basically everything. Same time, though, Randy coming around the south side with the rest of the Glaives, taking out a few metal extractors. No constructor deaths, but and a couple of metal extractors is not bad. Still, though, Randy remains on the back foot economically. And Randy pointing out in the stream chat that jump's main advantage here is the map mobility. As we saw there with the Constable, and in general, the fact that they can jump over the cliffs makes it really tricky to deal with. 
And that's kind of the thing. However, we are starting to get to the point where we could be seeing, could theoretically be seeing, like, riots. But no, we're seeing Impglaive. That is where Randy's going with this, which doesn't surprise me. They can micro it out. They don't have to worry. If they're, as long as they avoid the pyros or hit them with sufficient numbers, they should be fine. And this is what I mean by sufficient numbers. Two pyros go down at the cost of two glaives. Possibly five. Definitely five. Okay, well, eventually five. Though, still, that actually does work out. It's 440 metal for the pyros, but only about 330 me or 325 metal for the glaives. So actually a bit of an attrition advantage for, Dran for Randy right there. Although, again, the reason I was saying Puppy has a... Sorry. The reason I was saying Jump Bot has a time against Glaives, has an easy time against Glaives and Cloakie, is because Puppy's one-shot Glaives. That's the bigger reason. Pyros are good against them in the right conditions, but it's Puppies that are the real threat. Which we aren't seeing Dregs use a lot, because to be fair, they are pretty singular. Like, they do one thing and then they die. If you have a lot of reclaim, it's fine, but if you don't, it's not really all that useful. Pyros, on the other hand, are reusable. They don't kill themselves to attack. Like most units. Like most units, they survive combat, assuming they don't get killed by the opponent. They sometimes survive combat. Speaking of, though, we do have the imp up front, which does not survive combat, ever. Because it is another suicide unit. Curious to see if that positioning works out. It's a little bit odd. I, considering the Lotuses are there, I don't know if this... I see the point, is that, you know, if anything comes in to deal with the Lotus, the Imp goes off and the Lotuses kill them. It's just more... I don't see that as being the target of choice. This, however, does make sense. This Imp position is actually going to be quite amazing. The Pyros are not going to be able to deal with it before they go up. But again, this is what I mean. The Imps... If the Pyros know the Lotuses are there, which they do, they're not going to be just randomly jumping into the, some random part of the map. They're not going to run into that Imp. So it's more if an assault does occur on this side of the map. As for the rest of it, that's what this Imp is for. Making sure that any assaults over to the south side do not have much to work with. Randy's commander under heavy fire, though, in every sense of the word. Thankfully for them, they also had a couple Lotuses to work with, so those Pyros simply can't do that much. Two that die to deal a bit of damage to a commander and a Lotus, which is easily going to be repaired. But again, more importantly, Dregs is just using these as distractions to set up their own economy. Which they're doing far faster than Randy is. And with that, it's going to be Dregs just able to take out this entire defensive line from afar. They don't have to worry at all about hitting that imp. I mean, they might go for it, in which case, yes, they will hit the Imp. But I don't see that happening. They've got this nice little siege platform here on the top. And that's working just fine. However, Phantoms are, or Scythes are up, not Phantoms yet. We're getting close. I think we're at the point, I'd say, where Phantoms could come up. It's like 20 second build time for a Phantom right now. I don't think Randy's quite confident with the army they have, though, going for... I mean, they don't really need them yet. The Phantoms are going to be more useful when Moderators become... Or Firewalkers become a thing, which is, to be fair, now, or at least in 15 seconds. That's when we're going to want to see Phantoms, though. I, th I have a feeling Randy's going to just try to use Slings to deal with the Firewalker. Scythe, however, coming in, does manage to spot out the Firewalker under construction. Also, might manage to slow it down. And Caretaker does go down, but this Firewalker is produced before that can happen. Does not slow things down too much, but yeah, the Firewalker is known, it is seen, and we're not seeing the response yet from Randy. Not entirely sure what the plan is. So with that, yeah, okay, I think... I mean, with the Scythe, Randy was saying the target of the Caretaker with the Scythe, I don't know if that's the... Oh, that was a earlier battle. That's well, not really relevant right now, as a dozen pyros just collapsing on Randy's commander. Even the two lotuses cannot deal with it. The glaives will try to help, but it's all a question of whether or not Randy's commander will survive. And the answer appears to be no. It's already jumped away. 
But no, the Glaive is able to come in. Looks like they will be able to save the day, taking out all of the Pyros coming in there. The cost of all their lives, but that commander at least survives another day. And also, gets a nice hefty chunk of 1.5 thousand metal reclaim. Oops. So, that really worked out for Randy, all things considered. Especially, they have been behind economically this entire game. Having a nice split of reclaim like that is going to be helpful. Although, looking at the attrition stats, that hasn't really helped much. Okay, I'm starting to see Dan Warrior's point. At least for Mass Pyro. I mean, at this point, I would have expected to see... Oof, that sucks. Oh, the imp going off on the slings themselves. But yeah, the... What's I was saying? Oh yeah, so Mass Pyro, I don't really agree with. The mass Moderator makes a lot more sense at this stage of the game. Uh, that's that's more surprising. Moderators are where things become really difficult because they they also one-shot glaives. So trying to use glaives against moderators becomes quite the challenge since you basically have to outnumber the moderators and then move in. You can't dodge projectiles like you can against most skirmishers. Still, the moderator is able to come in here. Should be able to take care of these lotuses. Well, not quite. Don't, don't ha quite have the range for that, I'm afraid. Firewalker absolutely does, though. That is the entire reason for its existence. Though, on a similar note, Sling is coming in here, forcing dregs out of the 3.5 metal extractor. Sling's doing their best. They're actually doing a decent job taking care of it. It's hard to tell how this is going to play out, though, because right now, Randy does seem to have a bit of an army cost advantage, but it's... Really, just coming down to what yeah, what they can make out of this reclaim if their commander survives another pyro push. This time a fully undefended one. There is an imp coming around the side trying to help stop the pyros and the moderators, but it's not really going to be here in time. It will be spotted. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, Treg's jumping right on top of the imp. Oh, that is unfortunate. More support pyros come in, but... With that imp, the rest of the Pyros basically are stuck here. Only a couple of them survived out, or got out of that just because they were jumping at the time. They got a bit less of the paralysis damage, but it doesn't matter. Reeve were able to come in, finish them all off. Beautifully done there by Randy. I'm not... I That was really just kind of unfortunate on Dreg's part. Randy just happened to have the imp in the perfect spot. Or at least the, maybe they knew Dreg would jump here because that was the optimal spot to jump. And then Randy went, I'll just put my imp here just to, just to catch the landing. Oh, that was a beautiful imp. So it's good to see them used well. That, that is a huge part of the cloaky arsenal, and if it's used well, I mean, they can get tons of free damage just like that. So with that, there is a bit more room for Randy to start rebuilding their army and get rid of a lot of the stuff that Dregs have been building up. Because again, Dregs did have a pretty strong early economic advantage, but it's starting to fall... I mean, the sling should be able to get rid of either the Stardust or the Metal Extractor, or possibly both. Once the Stardust is gone, though, Glaives can just rush up there and wipe the entire section out and reclaim it for Randy. Speaking of reclaim, though, Randy's still working off that field made over in the bottom left corner of the map. Thanks to the new Pyros, it's still 1.5k Metal. So we're not looking at Randy running out of any money anytime soon. Fortunately, we are looking at some of the problems of trying to shoot uphill. I mean, what can the Phantom see from its point of view? Yeah, it's like just there, barely. It's, yeah, easy to miss. Still, though, Dreg is rebuilding over the southwest side of the map, maintaining that advantage, but again, it's only economic. Randy has been winning every part of the game as far as the military side goes, and now they're starting to turn that into territory control. And again, more glaives coming in here to deal with pyros. Fortunately, not really positioned the best and stuck in the water as well. Oof, caught out by the terrain. Forced to retreat, and that means they are not going to be able to advance here. That is that is saving the day for dregs. Is able to move right in with all the moderators? Yeah, this thing you got to be careful about with shallow water. It does slow your units down. Fording rivers is a risky move. Which did not pay off. Still, though, Randy, having gotten the economic advantage thanks to Reclaim, 
They don't have to worry about that so much. They have the attrition advantage, they have the economy advantage. Dregs right now does have territory going for them. But that's about it. Randy, I mean, most of that is the reclaim. But that's a lot of reclaim. Now, there's a lot around there. And that's exactly it. Randy able to take a lot from that. And now we're going to see this 3.5 metal extractor over to the north be Randy's pretty soon. A couple conjurers over in the corner should be able to take that as soon as they get the chance to. And over in the southwest, similar idea. Stardust laid out here. I don't know if Randy's aware that Stardust is here. They will soon be. So thankfully for them, that hill has kind of been the way. Unfortunately for them, the Glaive's trying to get in here is basically impossible. Between the shallows and the hills, there's just no way of getting them up in time. Ooh, from the same... Wait, is that... Really? Okay. Cloaking in a bunch of puppies. I... I like it. As an interesting move. Again, I have to be careful about the fire, because that, as Drex is well aware, definitely being careful about the fire. Same time we are seeing the Mass Phantoms. This is where we're seeing what Dan Warrior was talking about earlier in chat. Mass Phantom being used as a tool to fight off everything here. And well, we'll see if it works out. Again, the puppies coming in here cloaked. Kind of revealing the fact that they're there. But the problem, of course, is it doesn't matter if they reveal. What matters is that they get close enough to kill before being hit. Phantoms attacking ground just to try to guess where a puppy could possibly be. But yeah, now at this point, it's just free hits from the puppies. Really nice move by Dregs here. Same time Stardust goes down over the southwest. So Randy is able to take that expansion as well. But this move by Dregs could be enough. Glaives coming in, just meat shielding, tanking all the puppies to stop them from hitting anything else. Now the knight finds the iris, and that is going to be the end of that assault. Not a whole lot of territory claimed as a result, but Dregs following it up with Mass Firewalker... Moderator and a few pyros as well. So this is not over yet. Oh, but a rover switch coming in from Randy. It's going pure Ravager? They are going pure Ravager. A Ravager Phantom. So I guess Ravager's running interference while the Phantoms do the actual damage. Interesting choice, but it may not matter. Oof, Randy's commander goes down the south, east, south side expansion has been taken out. Dregs once again getting that economic advantage because the reclaim has mostly been spent. And where it wasn't spent, the units that were reclaiming it all got killed. So this is a huge opening for Dregs to get back into this and seal the deal. It's looking a little bit like Randy might have one chance, maybe? I mean, if the Phantom gets rid of the Firewalkers, then there's at least something to work with. But getting the Phantom up is a 20 second process. Stops the Ravagers from coming up. There really isn't the resources in Randy's bank to actually build all this stuff. Treg's also, thanks to the puppies, turning him, uh, turning an all-game attrition deficit into an attrition lead. And I am seeing this game looking likely to end pretty soon. There's one Ravager that's been completely wiped out. No room for the knight to find it any damage, any value whatsoever. Fan one Phantom is out, but that's... sort of maybe one Firewalker? That's just not enough. Especially now that Dregs has control over the, both of the 3.5 metal extractors. And on top of already having the economic lead, on top of having all of the reclaim coming in, going for gunship plants as well? What are they planning to do with that? I mean, a drop seems like the obvious move, but I guess they could be going for, like... Mass Nimbus? I don't think they're going to go for Crow. That'd be a, that would be a flex, but I don't think they're going to do that. Also, I don't think it would last long. I don't even know if the Gunship Plant's going to be done in time before this game is over. Just with all the Pyros into the main base. Randy's defenses have pretty much fallen. Only two Phantoms remain. And those Phantoms are not going to be able to save the Rover Assembly. They might be able to save the Cloaky Bot Factory. But again, it is looking dire for Randy right now. Have any backup here? Not really. Their economy is neatly spread out, but that's not the real concern. The real concern is just that they have no real way of producing anything. Phantoms are coming in, doing their best, and they aren't doing a bad job. But again, Randy just has none of the map to their name. Dreg's going... Okay, going for Mass Locusts. 
Also a good move. Let's go around the back side of the map, wipe out all the economy as you're attacking the front. At this point, Randy basically just... Wait, I don't know if they're waiting for death or what, but they are not going to be lasting too much longer. This game... This game is looking like it'll be... It, a shield web factory coming up. Randy does have one ga one play up their sleeve. This game is not necessarily over, but I, I don't know. Like Two times metal extractor... Or two times metal difference. Even with the stored metal Randy has, it's not going to be enough in terms of build rate. I mean, what are you going to build with shield bots? They are a factor that relies entirely on having a fairly large clump of units for the shields to help each other out. They're not really a unit, or not really a factor you switch towards to get a single unit that'll turn things around. Especially in this context, I, I don't know what the plan is. Other than desperately try to stay in the game, that's really all I can see. Puppy's coming around here, trying to find if they can find any good value. And it looks like they will be able to find the Conjurers. One Conjurer down, the second Conjurer is also down, and that is it for Conjurers that are... Um, at least in the north side of the map. There are still some Conjurers over in the south side of the map. There are still some Conjurers that are building up a little bit over by the Cloakpot Factory, but that is about it. And the Locusts, of course, are still on the way. Like, that's just kind of what I mean, is that... Randy doesn't really have a chance... They're just trying desperately to find some way of getting back in here. Going for Mass Rogue, I suppose, is a way of dealing with the Pyros from a distance. Though I don't think it's going to really work in terms of the projectile speed. But again, I also don't think it's going to work because of the fact that there's a dozen Locusts that are flying around the map that will be very quickly wiping out... Or not even a dozen. How many Locusts are there? Seventeen. Dozen and a half Locusts going around the map that will be just wiping out everything. I mean, two of them might die? Nope, they get missed. And this is going to be it. The Locusts should be able to wipe out the rest of the base and get rid of the Phantoms. That leaves Randy with basically nothing. A couple of rogues being built up. But to the sheer weight of army coming from Dregs is going to be too much. And Randy throws in the towel. That is game. And ultimately, the economic advantage did work out. Though I will say Randy did have a point in the game where they weren't doing too badly. But as we can see, Dregs just had an economic advantage all the way through. Randy, really? Their army value is never above? Oh, the value killed is always higher, but they never had enough money to build, or metal to build up a large enough army to contest. That was more the problem. And the reclaim eventually got in, and the income eventually got over for a brief period. But ultimately, Dregs just had more metal. And even though they lost more units for a huge chunk of the game, they maintained an army advantage throughout. So yeah, that just kind of came down to a solid economy from the start of the game. Well, that was that for that game. So we have one more match for today. And that will be a match between Anarchid and Masper on Vantage. Which is a map I haven't, actually, I haven't seen all that much. I think it's not the most popular map. Sorry, it is one of the most... Sorry, I think it is one of the most popular maps of the Matchmaker. So we have seen it a fair bit. So yeah, we're going to be getting that going in just a few minutes. So stay tuned. <laughs>